All right, hey, good afternoon, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Monday, August 11, 2025. This is your afternoon tropical update on Tropical Storm Aaron and the rest of the Atlantic Basin. It is getting a little bit busier in the Atlantic Basin today. We do have newly minted again Tropical Storm Aaron west of the Cabo Verde Islands. Already tore through there this morning and uh, last night. I actually have seven people dead, as what one report I saw. Looks like probably some significant flooding and some rain, wind type thing going on there. Uh, definitely um, unfortunate here that the storm has already caused some destruction and loss of life as it moves into the open Atlantic and will be over water for many days to come. Rest of the Atlantic Basin, not very active right now. We got two little areas of interest that the Hurricane Center is watching, these two little swirls right here. They're not really going to do anything, and they're kind of up moving away, so no threat to the eastern U.S. And we kind of got this non-tropical kind of remnant MCS thing going on in the eastern Gulf. This is going to move up into the uh, central Gulf Coast states today and the Florida Panhandle. Some heavy rain expected there, thunderstorms, but uh, not expecting any tropical development out of that uh, over the next few days. So let's go to the Hurricane Center's map. Again, Aaron down here. We have our two areas of interest, not worried about them at all. So first cone from the Hurricane Center, 11 a.m., maximum stand winds 45 miles an hour, and that movement to the west at 20 miles per hour. Hurricane Center's first track does show this remaining a tropical storm until Wednesday, kind of subtly bending down to the west-southwest as we go into Monday through Wednesday, and then starting to gain some latitude as it becomes a hurricane on Thursday and is a major hurricane by Saturday morning as it pulls up just north of the Lesser Antilles, the kind of the Northern Antilles, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. Uh, it looks like confidence is still fairly high that this is probably going to make it north of the Antilles. If it doesn't, then we got a lot of other problems to worry about. So assuming that this track holds, we will have a major hurricane sitting just kind of northeast of Puerto Rico on Saturday morning, likely a Category 3, maybe a Category 4 hurricane at this point. Uh, the environment in, for, in front of Aaron looks pretty good, and the storm is likely going to be fairly strong as it reaches the Antilles. So, of course, the question is going to be from there, well, what can we really expect with Aaron? And that kind of, you know, to some degree hinges on what we see over the next few days, right? So current satellite presentation, Aaron pulling away from the islands, and it's kind of a compact storm. You have this broader wave axis of the ITCZ, so what will probably happen is some of this tropical moisture will start wrapping up into the storm as the Saharan air layer burst kind of moves away and gives the storm a little bit more breathing room. It's a little bit constrained right now. It doesn't have a ton of breathing room, but it was still able to organize overnight and this morning, and there's likely a very small low-level circulation up under this canopy of cirrus cloud tops. Uh, it's not very large. It's very uh, compact for now, but again, I think this wave will become a bit more broad, and everything will kind of spread out as it gets some breathing room once this impingement sort of uh, relents over the storm for a few days, and it can kind of lose a few degrees of latitude and kind of get a little more room to operate itself in. If you look at the forecast sea surface temperatures here, this is a plot from Tomer Berg's website showing the cone overlaid on uh, oceanic heat content uh, and sea surface temperatures rather so we have um, what we have basically here is a pretty, you know, fairly cool water. It's nothing too too amazing over the next few days. About 25, 26 degrees Celsius. That's enough to maintain your storm, maybe strengthen it a tiny bit. It's not really going to do a whole lot of favors for Aaron in the short term. But you can see here again what happens is as this thing bends a little bit further south, it gets that breathing room and it hits some warmer water. That's when we think the intensity is going to start clicking up pretty quickly and we get to hurricane status um, by later in the week and then again major hurricane status by Saturday morning. So I think that's a really good call out of the gate from the National Hurricane Center. So you can see here, sea surface temperatures will play a part. And then also, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot else going on for the storm as far as shear or dry air goes as it works into the vicinity of the islands. GFS showing that upper anticyclone over the storm with several outflow channels uh, to the south and to the east. So it's going to have plenty of ventilation aloft. It's going to have very light wind shear and plenty of moisture to work with as well. Some dry air on either side. But since these winds are moving with the storm, there's not going to be a whole lot of ways to evac that dry air in. So I don't really see any kind of major tropical troughs or anything else that would kind of hinder the storm. It should be pretty much game on for it as it works off to the west over the next couple of days. So um, as we, we look at the future of Aaron, high pressure over the central Atlantic is going to guide this westward for many days to come. So the high kind of, you know, kind of impinges down on the storm and the Euro shows us moving across as we go into Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, it's got it parked again, just like the GFS does. A little bit further north than GFS does. GFS is a hair further south, but generally most models find this north of the Antilles on Saturday. And this is where we're going to kind of start watching these high pressure trends and these troughs. So, you know, you have a hot, you have a high pressure kind of sitting over the southeast U.S. And as we go in later on in the period, 
what looks like develops as we see early next week is a break. We have a ridge kind of centered here over the Southeast. We have your other ridge kind of ridged in out over the central Atlantic. And then we have this trough kind of dig in from Canada. And it looks like this is going to create a weakness, which Aaron would just somewhat to follow back out to sea. That's what the overwhelming evidence we have right now is for our models. If you look at the GFS and Euro ensembles, most of them show a recurve, a uh, you know, overlay from Tomer Berg's website, which is kind of blending all these different ensembles together also overall shows that if you look at noah's hurricane uh historical tracks if you pull up any storm that's developed within 60 miles of the cabo verde islands about 80 to 90 percent of them do eventually recurve only about 10 percent make it over it's a function of latitude to some degree uh because um, what you see is if a storm is already as far north as the Cabo Verde Islands here, it's a lot different than being here. If you're here versus here, it's a big difference in your starting point because a storm tracking this far south just simply won't feel any upper flow from the Gulf, from the uh, upper polar front jet unless it's like a super deep strong trough. Um, so typically storms, especially this time of year, wouldn't get plucked out of the deeper part of the MDR. But if they're already kind of riding the northern edge of it to where they're going to miss the Caribbean, it's just you're so much closer to feel that magnetic pull to make it make sense of those upper troughs trying to drag these storms out to sea. And you kind of got a weird position of the Bermuda Azores where it's kind of ridged up here and you kind of kind of got a nose of it here. But you kind of you've you've had consistent breaks in the trough off here and you've had a cooler start to the eastern U.S. so you kind of got this look where there are still some breaks so I think this is probably going to want to recurve I, I generally buy the evidence here that this is going to recurve I just caution that I've seen a track that looks similar to this uh, many years ago with Hurricane Irma and it didn't recurve uh, I remember Florence didn't recurve either and Florence is even further north than Aaron was at the start so don't uh, always take these for gospel. A lot of times these models are banking heavily on climatology when we're looking past five, six, seven days. And again, the climatology says, well, it's going to recurve. So the models go, okay, well, it's going to recurve. So sometimes these models will just sort of invent, you know, reasons for it to recurve when it's not necessarily the case. So again, that's the overwhelming betting favorite right now. Just don't lose sight of the fact that we are still many, many, many days away from this being any sort of a final call here. Um, it's just now pulling away from Africa. Again, I'm particularly interested in the next few days, this kind of uh, line between 35 and about 45 north. You know, does it lose any significant amount of latitude? Does it kind of just stay right in the middle of the cone? Does it track north of the cone? You know, these three things right here might be a big uh, deterministic factor in how much it does want to recurve at the end. I mean, if it rides that southern part of the cone all the way up and maybe grazes the islands, your recurve potential might be a lot less than if it stays far north and you're right here on Saturday versus you're right here on Saturday. And that looks like a big difference, but it may not really be when we're talking about seven days out on the forecast. It may just not be nearly as big of a, of a gap as it looks. So again, those small adjustments in the long term and the short term can be big changes in the long term. That butterfly effect running out over a long period of time, stretched out over a long timeline. Just remember that, you know, we got to keep an eye on this. But for now, everything looks OK. We're going to just keep an eye on it and we'll just see how it goes. Uh, so I will have daily updates on the page, on the Facebook page, obviously. Uh, YouTube will just be back probably Wednesday, Thursday, as things look like they're developing. Um, we're not going to just rehash it every day because tomorrow I'll tell you the same thing I just told you just now. So uh, got to chew clock for a couple days, eat our popcorn, take our time, watch it. You should already have your plan and be prepared and we will just reassess when it comes into it. So that's pretty much it for your topical update today, guys. We're going to have Aaron, and then we'll probably have plenty more to talk about going into the next two, three weeks. It's probably going to be a busy time in the Atlantic, at least probably through the end of the month. So we'll just keep tracking them as they come. So until then, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good one.